the journey to my indigenous ways. Sometimes we call that the red road. So where does my red road begin? It actually begins a long, long time ago. I didn't have a start point in my life that I can remember, but I had a very influential grandma who was very proud of her indigenous ways. Um, she was also a curandera, so she knew a lot about plant medicine. She was just very interesting. She had gone to Sherman Indian Boarding School in Riverside and just always felt good about being native. So I always had that feeling, a, a good feeling. And I also had a feeling that I wanted to be, I, I could visualize something, I could see something, I could feel it. And it felt like dirt. And I would look out at a field, like an empty field, and go out there and start digging in the dirt. And sometimes I'd get my friends to dig with me and we'd sit in it. And then we'd cover it, and I remember feeling so comfortable. Just the feeling of the dirt around me, and then the, the quietness of the darkness. And when I was about 18 was the first time I went into a sweat lodge. And as soon as I crawled in and felt the dirt, and then the door closed to the darkness, I knew that's what I had been seeing and feeling. So I knew that's where I belonged, and I didn't feel fearful. So I didn't have one of those experiences of anything but a flow. It felt like a flow of going from something I was looking for to something I found. And um, later on in life, though, I, I came across that the, the first sweat lodge I went into was the northern style above the ground with the willows. Later on, I saw that the mezcali that's built under the ground the one from uh, south in Mexico, they use the words, the ground is dug underneath and then you have a cover. And then I realized actually that's what I had been seeing and feeling. But when I went into the Northern Style Lodge, it had all the elements that I recognized. So I felt very comfortable with it. And it started really young that I was in the sweat lodges. I, I was just thinking about it, that I don't know that there's ever been a time since then, since over 40 years ago, um, that I haven't, I guess 43 years ago, that I haven't had access to a sweat lodge. And it's been very different in different places. Usually wherever I lived, either in the community there was a sweat lodge or in my own backyard. Um, when I lived up in Montana was one of the best experiences around sweat lodges that I had. There was women that would sweat and I'd go and sweat with the women there. Um, this was on the Rocky Boy Reservation in Montana and one woman I remember in particular, Ruby Small. And she, from her, without realizing what I learned was how natural a part of life this really is. That you build the fire, you, you put the lodge together, you go in, you pray. And for me, it's very powerful not only to pray, but also that's where the things that I don't even see on a daily basis begin to surface. And I can choose to get rid of them or deal with them. But the stuff that I bury inside just to get through each day, when I, uh, in the sweat lodge, it just brings it up and I can deal with it and I can, I feel lighter when I leave. Um, so the sweat lodges I've known have been very much like that, very organic, very much just a part of life. And then when I'd come back here to California, um, just because of the way life is, very few people have their own sweat lodges in the backyard, I did find the community lodge. And that was really different. I struggled with that a little bit because the community lodges bring in a, a larger variety of people. People you don't necessarily know as well. It's not like a little family unit. But I was always grateful that I could come back and find a place to sweat. And now that I've been here for so many years, I've really grown to love the community that we have and um, know it's very important. So it gets back to why we're even doing these videos and 
why we have SIP is because this matters makes a big difference and it's not something I want to see leave in my lifetime. And I've learned by many, many people, many places that I have been, that it's all come together at the various sun dances when there's sweat lodges. Um, during my time up at Wounded Knee, we had a sweat lodge in there and that was powerful for just keeping everything moving forward and getting the healings that we needed as we went along. Up in the Northwest with the, the fishing people up there in that area, I've been in Sweat Lodge with them. I've been very fortunate out with the, the um, Shoshone Paiute in Nevada. And there's always a little difference. That's why I always tell people, whenever you go to a lodge, don't ever go in acting like, oh, I know what's going on here. You do, there's some fundamentals, but you always gotta keep your mind open to the ways that it's done and to the direction of the sweat lodge leaders. And being sure that it's being done in a good way, in a right way, and that's a whole other story about making sure that things are done in a good way.